So it's summer and what's more important than cooling in a PC? And uh, I often get the questions why or what temperatures are still safe for my components such as graphics cards, CPUs or even power supplies. This depends on well, the component itself and also what the manufacturer recommends because different manufacturers recommend different temperatures for each of their components. This goes for processors in terms of generations as well as for graphics cards or other things. To start off with the basic components, we would be looking at CPUs for example. Well, while there are some difficulties with current Intel GP, uh, CPUs which also get very hot <laughs> so um, there is a lot of room for discussion and interpretation um, while there are many different opinions about these CPUs and how they behave currently or rather in the current landscape uh, there is a recommendation for temperatures that comes from Intel while Intel says that running these CPUs up to their throttling limit, which is in most cases 100 degrees Celsius, um, it's not really, I think, a good idea to run these up to that temperature. While most coolers on the market aren't able to cool them below that, so they would be power throttled, so they will basically boost until they hit 100 degrees and then just reduce their power limit. I'm not really a friend of that. I really recommend that you keep CPUs below at least 90 degrees at all times, if you can. And the good thing about that is that in some motherboards, or a lot of motherboards actually, you can set temperature limits or temperature targets uh, which can actually also go higher than the throttling limit, which is really not recommended, I'd say, for uh, long periods of time or longer use or daily use or whatever. Uh, so there you could be selecting 105 degrees Celsius. Going below that, though, is a good thing because as we have the issues with current Intel generations that have problems with electromigration, and general wear and tear due to high power consumption or high power throughput and in addition to that high temperatures low temperatures will actually lessen the effects of the power consumption or rather the power draw and also reduce the effects of the electro migration while at a 10 degrees difference there might not be a lot of difference this also goes for the power consumption because the power consumption actually goes down with lower temperatures because in electronics there is lower power leakage and therefore the components pull less power when they are cooler. This is especially prominent if somebody uses dry ice or liquid nitrogen to overclock their CPU to the maximum. The power consumption actually would be at the if the CPU would be at the same frequency and voltage as it uh, on air cooling the power consumption would be much lower so it is actually also a good thing to keep the temperatures lower just for power consumption sake and also therefore the electro migration will be less and that's what I'm going to going on about but everybody kind of needs to decide on their own what limits they are comfortable at again as long as you stay below the manufacturer's guidelines so the temperatures spec for these parts because with those temperatures the components are expected to reach their life expectancy which is in most cases around uh, four to eight years I think on CPUs and GPUs for example then that should be fine. For graphics cards it's a bit of a different story because there are multiple different temperatures you can look at. There is the GPU temperature and there's the hotspot temperature. The hotspot temperature is not actually one spot on the GPU. I've explained that in a previous video, but it is a, depending on which sensor on the GPU, on a GPU there can be multiple hundred sensors. So for example, on modern GPUs, there would be around two to 300 or sometimes even more sensors and this hotspot sensor is basically the hottest sensor on that GPU and that is shown as the hotspot. So that is really a good thing to know where the GPU is hottest. And the normal GPU temperature that is shown as GPU temperature is just an average across all the sensors. So you gotta keep that in mind. 
AMD, for example, recommends that the hotspot temperatures stays below 110 degrees Celsius, which is kind of high for my feeling. But as we have come to see a lot of cards, especially reference models, they tend to reach 100 degrees or so anyway. So yeah, and that is also kind of an issue maybe why uh, graphics cards sometimes on the high end tend to fail more if they are not cooled properly because the temperatures can affect not only electro migration but also other parts on that GPU for example soldering and other connections. As for the GPU temperature are their recommendations? Well the recommendations are kind of the temperature limits the manufacturers set so usually that's around 85 degrees Celsius and they recommend to stay below that and that's also where the cards start throttling more heavily or more aggressively than for example with just slower rising temperatures while yes the cards start to throttle really heavily at like above 100 degrees um, 85 degrees is a mark where they actually start to reduce clocks to the base clock levels but again, here I would also recommend to stay well below that and I'd say about 70 to 75 degrees is ideal or rather stay below 80 degrees just to be safe. And uh, obviously on graphics cards, you can also do some undervolting or power limiting to get the same performance maybe at even the lower power consumption. We have shown that on a 4090, for example, you could save 100 even or even more watts and get the same power or the same FPS in games. Going to a bit more, well, different components such as power supplies, SSDs, motherboards, which is also kind of interesting, and RAM. A lot of RAM sticks do have temperature sensors which can be quite handy diagnosing RAM instability problems because actually the current RAM sticks or current RAM modules tend to use or tend to also need more power or get hotter than before for example because they are running lower voltages but more amperage so you could also be looking at that here it's recommended to stay below 70 degrees to not influence stability negatively similar thing goes for ssds while there are differences in ssds such as sata ssds those usually don't get that hot anyway but on m.2 ssds they tend to get really hot especially pci express 4.0 and 5.0 ones and that's basically the controller getting very hot the controller usually is the most power hungry part on an ssd and is able to go up to like 95 degrees celsius on starting at 85 degrees those control those ssds will start to throttle so reduce their in most instances write speeds because writing is a lot more work for the controller so therefore it gets hotter and um, on 95 degrees they will drastically reduce their write speed or read speed therefore also depending on what cooler you have you might have an easy time keeping them from throttling or if you don't have a cooler at all your ssd might actually reach that pretty quickly even from like half a minute of writing consistently or so it already might reach 85 to 90 degrees celsius you can't really do much about that if you don't have the space for a cooler if you do though it's a good thing to use it well, these controllers are designed to run at those temperatures and the bigger issue is the flash lifespan, which is usually the thing to fail first. It's also a good idea to keep your SSD pretty cool. Looking at the motherboard, there are also multiple temperature sensors. While the chipset isn't that important, although on X570, for example, we had some issues where these chipsets were getting pretty warm and most of the motherboards used active cooling. You should stay below 70 degrees here as well. But on modern or current motherboards, the chipsets usually don't get that hot. So it's not that big of an issue. What's more of an issue is the voltage regulators because those are actually getting really, really hot because they produce a lot of heat, especially on high-end CPUs, which use a lot of power and therefore the voltage regulators have to convert a lot of 12 volt power to the one point something volts that the CPU actually needs. So they get quite hot. 
voltage regulators depending on the manufacturers of the vrms themselves can handle different temperatures and here it sounds kind of high because these manufacturers often say 115 to maybe even 150 degrees celsius um, well yes they are specified at that the time these voltage regulators last which is mostly 10,000 15,000 or even more hours uh, they are rated at that temperature very often that rating doubles every 10 or 15 degrees the temperature drops so if you would run them at 100 degrees they would last twice as long as they would at like 115 for example which is important to know and this is why vrm cooling is especially important for the stability and also for the longevity of your motherboard also when these vrms throttle not only do they reduce their output also because of that the cpu throttles and that is uh, heavily because obviously the cpu does not get much power there or the whole system even crashes so that's also not a good thing coming to the last component basically we are going to look at is uh, the power supply well most power supplies don't have temperature monitoring implemented uh, on some digital PSUs you can monitor it with software but the where the sensor is placed and everything is kind of difficult to judge there is a temperature rating for most power supplies if it is a decent one they are rated for rated for 40 degrees operating temperature so if the surrounding air that the PSU pulls in with its fan is 40 degrees they are rated to operate at their full capacity at that intake temperature there's also very good units are certified at 50 degrees or even sometimes 60 degrees although that's not very common and they are specified to run at that intake temperature for the fan the fan might get louder because the fan control obviously mostly is temperature controlled but still they will be able to handle that and that is also a reason to buy a high quality power supply because they can handle higher intake temps while most of the PSUs are mounted with the fan basically sucking in cold air from outside the case there still is some instances where this is important especially for example if you have carpet or if the dust filter isn't cleaned regularly that's basically it for temperatures in your PC I have I hope you have learned something and some of those questions about temperatures are cleared up now as always I wish you a nice day and goodbye